Well, here is another possibility for an electric motor for a tractor conversion. It's a big old electric motor. I mean, there's nothing for scale here, but I'll get out a tape measure in just a minute. Um, this is out of a full-size sit-down forklift. It is an Eaton brand, made in the USA, electric motor. And uh, let's see here. It's an X2 motor. Uh, but basically this went directly onto the uh, differential in a full-size electric forklift. Kind of the main body of this is about uh, 14 inches across. And the actual diameter of this, uh, let's see, it, uh, hard to get exactly to the edge, but it's like a foot, about 12 inches in diameter. Let's see if we can get a little better view on the other side. Yeah, 12, 12 and a half inches. And it looks like it's a series wound motor. You got some big brushes over here with uh, multiple conductors going to the brushes. Oh, doubled brushes actually. And a nice big commutator down there. Here, I just tipped this uh, towards the daylight so you can see a little bit better. So there's the brushes and the commutator. And the commutator itself looks like it's like about three inches across and these brushes are just mammoth. You know, just huge, heavy-duty DC setup. I don't know how much this motor weighs because I can't actually pick it up. I can move one end at a time and with one end on the ground and the other end set on this bathroom scale, uh, it's a little under 110 pounds uh, for half of it. <laughs> you know, just the half that's of the motor that's on the scale. Now, if I lift the other end up, um, we could probably get a better estimate. Uh, still not super accurate. I'll give it a try, but I can't hold the camera at the same time. Okay, I got it kind of balanced on end. Looks like it's in the neighborhood of 250 pounds. And I simply cannot pick up this electric motor. It's about 250 pounds. I mean, it's got decent handles since it's got the shaft coming out both ends, but I just have no way to be able to lift this thing. I'm gonna need an engine hoist or something. I did find that I had one of those cargo carriers that slides into a two inch receiver hitch on a car. So I headed back home, hooked this up, came back, and I was able to wrestle the motor up onto this because it's pretty low. It's not that far off the ground. With it strapped down, I was able to transport it home and then get it up onto a rolling case and strap it down to that. Now that we got the motor back in my garage, I can uh, get some of the specs on it, starting with the drive end. Uh, this is a splined shaft right here. Uh, the splined part of the shaft itself is about an inch and three quarter inches long. And then it has a separate um, part on the tip here designed for a castle nut. That is about three quarters of an inch long. Um, I don't know exactly what nut it would take. Um, might be a one inch. And if we use our digital calipers here. The dimension on the shaft, 1.357 inches. And if I can get in and measure the uh, minor dimension, making sure I'm going straight across, looks like inch and a quarter. little less than an inch, 0.96. So probably a one inch nut on here. And it looks like this is inch and three eighths shaft, although I can't say that for sure. It's pretty close though, pretty close. And then what I can do here is I need to count the spline. So I'm just gonna take the one that lines up with the hole here, visually mark it. And then I can just count one, two, three, 19, 20, 
21 splines on here. Now let's spin the motor around, take a look at the commutator end. On the commutator end, we've got a tail shaft and the main section of the tail is just shy of two and a half inches. And then it has a threaded section on the end. Um, I do have a hole gauge. It goes up to three quarters inch. It looks like that probably takes a three quarter inch nut on there. It does have a keyway right here. Uh, I'm assuming that's just a square keyway. Uh, I suppose it's possible that it's one of those half moon ones, but uh, it's, it's in there pretty solid. I won't be able to tell in, until I can uh, smack that out of there. I did put a little uh, PB blaster solvent on there last night. Um, spins nice. Uh, because it's tapered, it's going to have a different diameter back here than up here. So I'll just take a look. And at the back, it's full width. It is, uh, looks like one and one eighth inches. And up at the front, just a little shy of one inch. So I guess it's a one inch to inch and an eighth taper. And equally spaced around the tail shaft, we've got some tapped holes here. And these look like they are 3 8 inch holes. Although from what I can see in there, it looks like they're um, a fine thread rather than the more common coarse thread. So if we look at the commutator on this motor, first of all, we can see um, pretty shiny copper in here. You know, it doesn't look too corroded or anything. And if we come in close here, we can see the brushes. One thing that's kind of cool, um, this is a really neat little spring. So if I push this in, you can see the other end of it. And there's a little tab here. I'll get that out. And then this comes straight out. This is this cool little thing. It's a, it's a spring that just rolls up. And so that's going to constantly push down at the same pressure um, on the carbon brushes here as they wear. Um, pretty cool, neat little things. And then what else is nice is I can just pull them out, get them completely out of the way, which uh, gives us some more room for looking at the brushes. So now we can pull these straight out, take a look at them. First of all, uh, it's a pair of brushes here, so they're doubled up, that's kind of cool. Um, I see some writing on this one. And this says, 3406 on it, so I can look that up. Uh, if I need to replace these brushes, I can probably find replacements pretty easy because it's identified. And the leads that are on these brushes look pretty heavy duty. They're surrounded with that nice uh, kind of non-conductive non fiberglass braid over the top of them, uh, going to some pretty heavy bus bars down here. And if these are out of the way, um, I can take a good close look at the commutator there. Um, one thing I can do is I can count those bus bars. So again, what I could do is just like visually mark uh, right in here. And then I can just uh, count those, just spin it and count as I go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. 100, 100 individual bars on the commutator here. Brushes themselves are one and a quarter inch in the longer dimension. By a half inch thick. And I don't know how long they originally were, but as of right now, they're an inch and a half long. I pulled out all the springs that held in the carbon brushes, just uh, slid the carbon brushes back a little bit so they're, uh, they're not rubbing directly on the commutator. And now if I spin this, uh, it's just gonna freewheel. There's really uh, essentially no resistance on this. The bearings feel smooth. I don't hear any kind of noise or anything. Looks like the bearings are in pretty good condition. And a common shorthand for power of uh, 
series mount DC motors is you just measure the diameter, kind of put it into a class. And if I measure across here, I can't get a super accurate measurement just because the shaft being in the way, but still it's uh, 12 and a half. Maybe I can put something here, measure from here to here, get a little more accurate. Well, that right there says six and a quarter. So I'm going to say this is a 12 and a half inch diameter electric motor. The other thing you clearly see on the commutator end of the motor here is our electrical connections. Uh, this one's a little bit different than other motors I've worked on in that we've got eight electrical connections, but two of them are a heavy wire from up here to down here. So it looks like all it's doing is that that's a connection that normally would be internal here instead it's external and by having access to some of these connections you can have multiple leads coming off of it which would let you take it to a uh, reversing contactor so since this originally would have been directly on the uh, the differential in a forklift you would actually need to spin the motor one way or the other for forwards and revert and reverse in the forklift and that would mean having access to uh, four terminals to be able to reverse the polarity of the motor. And the posts on here, those are uh, 3 eighths inch brass posts. Now the one thing that I see as a disadvantage to this motor, um, clearly it's going to be very powerful. It is a little on the heavy side, about 250 pounds, but if we look at the drive end, it's not just a flat plate. It's kind of a, a casting and it has bolt holes over here that are at one depth and these other ones that are at a different depth. Um, we've also got some smaller bolt holes here. They're closer to the shaft. These are a little further away. I think if I do a measurement and I make spacers, I could essentially bring these bolt holes out to here. Um, I know that part might be a little challenging. Other than that, it looks like it's a, a great motor, really powerful. Uh, this thing would have no issues whatsoever moving uh, something like a full-size tractor. Now we're going to take a look at measuring the speed of the rotation of the shaft here in revolutions per minute. Um, I've got one of these little inexpensive digital optical tachometers. So it's got a laser on it, and what it does is it, it measures the pulses uh, basically from a reflective sticker, uh, how many times it, it catches that pulse. Um, the shaft is basically shiny metal, so I covered it with some black electrical tape, just so it's light, dark, light, dark as this spins. So I'm going to hook this up to 12 volts. Uh, we'll watch it spin up, and then uh, hopefully we can find out what our revolutions per minute is on this motor at 12 volts. I hadn't used this particular tachometer before and I was getting some kind of erratic readings on it. I went through the instructions, made sure I was using it right, and then I also did some best practices like using some matte black tape instead of shiny black tape, and then actually turning off the lights, making sure it was dark in here so that only that laser bouncing back was being measured. And once I did that, I was getting pretty much a steady 1200 RPM measurement. So at 12 volts, this was spinning at 1200 RPM. Now keep in mind though, that was not under load. And with the series wound DC motor, the only time you ever want to run it not under load is only at low voltage for testing. And since on a DC motor, speed is proportional to voltage at 36 volts, which is what the voltage of the forklift this came out of, uh, this motor could have spun at up to 3600 RPM. So we're definitely talking, you know, car engine range speeds here. But of course, again, that would have been under no load. It's going to spin slower than that when it's got a load on it. The shaft here has 21 splines on it, and it measures close to an inch and three-eighths. 
and I found out that there's a tractor PTO that uses 21 splines and it's marked as an inch and three eighths. So I went to my local fleet farm store and I the only part that I could find that had that 21 spline connection was an adapter. So this goes from 21 splines, inch and three eighths, to six spline, inch and three eighths. And uh, there is, I don't know if we can see inside here, there is uh, ball bearings in here and this uh, slides a little bit, so kind of like a quick release on uh, an air hose, for example. So those might be a little bit of an issue because I don't have a notch here. But um, I'm just kind of hoping that I got really lucky and this happens to fit on, because if it does, that means this is a standard shaft that I can find some other parts for and I won't have to make uh, something super custom. So here we go. This is for real the first time I'm trying to put this on here and I think I'm going to be either really excited or really disappointed. So <laughs> Okay, well those ball bearings do not I don't fully fully disengage. But it does, I mean, it does slide on and it feels solid. So I'm hoping that means I can get some other inch and three eighths, 21 spline component, um, just like a little coupler or something. And I can weld something else on here and use that as a way to connect this to a tractor or a car or however else we'd want to use it in an electric vehicle project. And lastly, I want to leave you with one caveat, and it's that perhaps this motor is actually too big. Let me show you what I mean. If we take a look at the front of the transmission on this farm tractor, there's not a tremendous amount of space uh, between the side rails here. Also at the very bottom, there's a connection up to the front. There's not a whole lot of space here. Uh, the motor is about 12 and a half inches. Some of these parts here only have 13 inches. It looks like it's less than six inches to the bottom. So will it actually fit? I guess to find out, I'll just have to try it. Um, I'll get this up on an engine hoist and see if I can get this in there. Uh, if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe so that you get all these videos. And next time, we'll give it a shot. We'll see if this motor will fit this tractor.